Hello, my dear audience. Today we're gonna visit something very different. Not a house, but an interior designed by John Lautner. It was located in this very ordinary building. Inside, all the spaces look the same, with straight lines and gray colors. However, this office looked very different. It was designed in such a way that you hardly had the idea of living in a rectilinear space. It was commissioned by James Goldstein, the same person who also owns John Lautner's Sheets Goldstein house. It was located on a 20th floor of this building, in just one room, measuring 34 by 25 feet. With windows facing the north and enclosed by neighboring offices on the west and east side, and accessible through a hallway in the south. On this floor plan, you can see that the two walls divided the room in two spaces, the secretary office and Mr. Goldstein's own workspace. On the east side, a series of panels was placed in alternating angles, covering the actual wall and hiding the fact that you are living in a rectilinear space. When we take a look at the design horizontally, we see that there was a lowered ceiling, again placed in alternating angles, and hiding the flat ceiling. This again breaks the idea of living in a box. Through this door we step inside, and we are in the workspace of the secretary. Take a look at how the desk was hung up at the dividing wall, creating a floating desk. The internal walls were placed in various directions. One wall was first placed in a 20 degree angle, but then turned in a 45 degree angle. The second wall was also placed in a 45 degree angle, but then in the opposite direction. Finally it turned in a 90 degree corner, where it was connected to the other wall with a glass plate. The first wall was leaning backwards, while the other wall was standing upright. The canted wall was clad with tiles of black slate, while the other wall was covered with sheets of brushed copper. The walls didn't reach all the way up to the ceiling. This allowed space for a Claire story. This acoustically separated the office from the secretary's room, yet it allowed natural light to infuse the whole space. The visual composition of the walls, ceiling and clerestory was so impressive that it was even used as the cover of Frank Asher's official book about John Lautner. The door of Mr. Goldstein's office was also made of copper and had no door handles, so when closed it seemingly disappeared into the wall. The copper of the panels reflected the sunlight with a red-brown filter, creating a beautiful warm atmosphere. The coffee table had a glass footing, creating a floating tabletop and giving the interior a more spatial and transparent character. There were two large mirrors in the left corner. These mirrors were placed diagonal against each other, like a triangle. The reflections made room more spatial by visually doubling the interior. But more importantly, the mirrors partially reflected the panorama, combining the interior with the exterior landscape. The office was perfectly constructed in every way. But keep in mind that it took one and a half year to build, and it costed around $400,000. Almost all the furniture was designed by John Lautner himself. From this angle you can see how spatial the small office was and how beautiful the sunlight was reflected by the copper walls. The entire floor was covered with black slate tiles 
in a triangular pattern. This pattern was partially repeated in the unique shaped rug, which was custom made for the office. A final interesting detail was that the only artificial light came from small light bulbs that were placed in holes in a wooden ceiling. I think it was important to make this video because it shows a different side of John Lautner. Many people think his career was solely committed to designing houses, but he did so much more. He designed swimming pools, entry gates, staircases, and he did the remodeling of already existing homes. The Goldstein office proves that John Lautner was also great in designing small interiors. But what happened to the office? In 1999 James Goldstein had to move out of the building. Luckily the office was designed to be taken apart and it was stored in 80 wooden crates. When Goldstein built his famous nightclub with a new workspace, the office was not longer necessary and he donated the office to the Los Angeles County Museum of Art. At this moment the museum have never displayed the office, so it's still hidden in the crates, somewhere deep down in a depot. I hope someone sees this video and then decides to permanently display the office in a museum, because it's a masterpiece that deserves a large audience.